Welcome to the Bible study for Constant Companion. Today we're going to look into chapter 7, being known. Who do you know simply by the sound of their voice? Who can call you and without the aid of caller ID, you know who they are in an instant. Though she's been gone for nearly 20 years now, I still vividly remember the sound of my grandma's voice, especially how she would say, I love you over the phone in such a way that you felt the cozy warmth of her hugs even over the phone. With even greater familiarity, our Abba knows your voice and he wants to hear you speak to him. Now this relationship is going to require a commitment from you, the same kind of commitment as any lasting relationship. It is going to require a consistent yes, even on days when you aren't feeling it, and a consistent no to other things that would distract you from or drive a wedge in that relationship. That kind of initial commitment and daily decision to follow through on said commitment is not unlike the covenant of marriage. I want you to understand this clearly. Although in this chapter we talk a good bit about effort and commitment, that all needs to be heard, experienced, and walked out in the context of relationship. Though relationships are reciprocal, they are not transactional. We do not expend effort to show love and affection to our spouses so that they will love us in return. I do not do the helpful things I do for my husband so that he will continue to do things for me. I do not tell him of my love so that he will lavish me with gifts. Intimate, loving, healthy relationships do not work like that. Instead, I do all that I do for my spouse simply because that is what flows from my heart toward him. And yes, there are days when I must remind myself that I love him and I'm committed to him. We are human. I have made a covenant with him for life and I will do all that I can for him and love him to the best of my ability until death parts us. My covenant with the Lord flows from the same place. It cannot be transactional. I cannot pour out my love and worship so that He will bless me. I cannot spend a certain amount of my time in prayer or reading the Word or memorizing Scripture so that He will see me as His good little child and grant my wishes. That's not relationship, that's consumerism. Instead, I act from a place of commitment and devotion that spills forth from the knowledge that God did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all. Romans 8.32. Romans 8.32 goes on to say that if He gave His own Son for us, how will He not also with Him graciously give us all things? He held nothing back from me and still continues to give me all of Himself. Why would I hold out on such a graciously giving God? Enjoy the discussion this week.